Hurt World is an interesting game. It came at a time where open world survival games were just about everywhere. You already had a lot of games making a name for themselves, while Hurt World was in a pretty awkward place. Definitely taking inspiration from games like Rust and Ark, but trying to make enough of an impression to stand out. Did it work? Well, we'll find out along the way. Hurtworld came out in December of 2015 into early access, of course. Initial reaction was, well, it was pretty well received to be honest. Looking at the release trailer, it had a very positive like to dislike ratio, and for the most part, the comments were pretty positive. The trailer shows a striking resemblance to Rust, but with some cars thrown in there. An honestly interesting turn for an open world survival game like this. Besides, the game had switching perspective, another interesting feature to me. The game was off to a booming start after releasing on Steam, peaking around 13,000 players. A very impressive feature for an indie game, for sure. On top of the impressive player base, Hurt World is being played by a lot of top name creators. Hurt World was in a really impressive place, especially starting out. But how long would it last? As it stood, Hurt World was a good take on a basic survival game with a few of its own traits. Past the focus on cars and changing perspective, it also had a few interesting creatures you had to worry about. I know at first Rust had some very piss poor zombies you had to worry about and even grew to have some aggro creatures, but her world has Bigfoot, which in and itself is pretty crazy. Her world was interesting, definitely enough to grab your attention, but did it have enough interesting features to hold enough players attention to continue as a staple of the survival game community? Well, we're going to look into that one. Hurtworld threw itself into competitive market at its peak and was doing it rather impressively. So, how well did it hang on? Well, I wish it went a little bit better for Hurtworld, to be honest. Things didn't go bad quick, but a slow, gradual decline was noticeable. So, what exactly happened? The game continued to push out updates very frequently, mostly bug fixes, but still the amount they came out and how quick they were coming out, the community had to respect what they were seeing. You had a lot of other survival games, namely Reign of Kings and more recently Survive the Nights release and then almost push no updates and suffer sort of a worse fate than Hurt World but still suffer the same fate nonetheless. The devs seemed to be open about a lot and reaching out to them didn't seem too hard. At the times the devs had a reddit which they seemed to be pretty active on. So why was Hurt World losing players at the rate that it was? I kind of wish there was more to it, but players either just chose to play Rust due to more features or jumped onto the next passing trend. And I can't even lie, I was the latter. You see, to be honest, I've never been a fan of Rust. The constant cycle of building a small base only for it to get turned to rubble by the big bad boys on the server just to build a small hut for another set of bad boys to do it all over again. It's frustrating and puts me on a loop of constant anger. But here's the thing, Hurt World was just a little bit different. Maybe it was just a little bit more barren, a little bit more spacious. Maybe people just didn't have a good enough stock of C4, but something was definitely different. Even getting weapons felt a little bit easier. I still remember defending my base with my buddy. We had shotguns and pistols. We were able to defend our base pretty well. Maybe a few days later, we again were getting raided. The people attacked us from a base nearby. We watched maybe four of the five guys walk out of the base. They were all geared up and they were heading our direction. We only had one choice, grab the valuable items and run. Normally we would be gunned down by now already in rust and it would be over fairly quick. But this instance, we had cars. By the time they had gotten to our base, we were already far, far gone. And it was a blast. Yeah, we had pretty much waved the white flag and admitted defeat, but we got out of there with our important items, and this time we weren't starting again from scratch. No, no, no. We were starting with some very great items to start with. Her world offered a get out of jail card almost, in the form of a car. A way to break the cycle, and it did it well. Honestly, after the night, I don't remember booting up Hurt World again. I don't even have a good reason why. I had a blast with the handful of times playing it, I still just didn't have enough of a memorable time to continuously come back. 
And I honestly feel like a lot of other players maybe shared my experience, had a very unique experience, and maybe from time to time talked to their friends about the fun they had on Hurt World. But that's it. Booted up a few times, had a few laughs, and then moved on. And past that, I honestly feel like I exhausted almost everything I could do in the game. Even though I know for sure that wasn't it. I couldn't find the energy to boot the game back up. Especially since this was a peak time for survival games to be released. Even though I know I only explored maybe 60% of the map, something was telling me that the rest of the 40% wasn't worth it. Maybe that 40% had something interesting, or maybe 100% of a different map in a different game would be way more enjoyable. This makes me think Hurt World came out at a great time and an awful time. It's hard to say if Hurt World came out any earlier if it would have gained the attention that it did because of how popular the survival genre was. If it came out any later, the trend was pretty much on a decline and the game probably wouldn't have received as nearly as much attention that it did. But it also came out in a time where everyone had such a variety of games to choose from that it's hard to pick this one over almost any other ones. With all that being said, how is Hurt World doing now? What's the player base look like? Has the game changed at all? Well, let's go ahead and find out. The game now has only about a 400 person average daily player base, with occasional peaks taking around 800, which doesn't sound great and honestly isn't going to turn any heads with a few decent populated servers, it still has a decent possibility of enjoying a few nights with some friends. If you played it at launch and left it at that for a while, there's actually a ton of new content to enjoy. And in December of 2019, they launched a large version 2 update, which include a larger map with five unique biomes. Loot drops, of course, customizable weapons, and one of the most interesting things to me, a sort of King of the Hill-like mode in an open map in Rad Towns to get high tier loot. This is incredibly interesting to me because I don't ever remember seeing this being done anywhere else. It's sort of like you and your buddies have to take control of a rad town for X amount of time. As long as you hold it for the entire time, you get this high tier loot. Obviously, attracting a lot of other people and attracting big amount of people into a small area. Rad towns offer great cover compared to its counterpart, which would be the loot box, where it normally just falls into a big open field in the middle of nowhere, and everyone just kind of goes apeshit over it. Hurt World took the simple survival game system and put a few new twists on it to make itself stand out a bit. Just didn't stand out enough. Is Hurt World dead? Not necessarily, but it looks like it might be on its deathbed. And unfortunately, there hasn't been any updates since January of 2020. The final V2 update sort of seemed like Hurt World's last send-off, which I can truly respect. After trying it myself, I can say the same as I did back in the day. With a big enough group, I can definitely see a fun night for sure, but on my own, the experience just felt bland and a bit boring. It's really hard for me to recommend this one. I would say if you have already have the game, re-download it, and maybe convince some friends to tag along, but if you haven't bought it, I wouldn't recommend doing so. With the $25 price tag, it feels a bit high for a game in Hurt World situation. The thing is, is I truly see that some people could really enjoy this game. Maybe you're burnt out on Rust, but still want something that's like Rust. Well, then I would say this is probably up your alley. Fortunately, I'm not burnt out of Rust. I don't really like Rust, so this really isn't up my alley. But back in the day, when I was really into survival games, this one was really unique to me for some reason. Sure, it didn't stick to me like it probably should have, and I moved on rather quick. But it was still more enjoyable than a lot of the alternatives that were trying to do the same thing that it was trying to do at the time. So as my last send off, that's how it kind of ended. If you think this game sounds enjoyable, it probably is enjoyable to you. Get a few friends and you probably could take over a server rather easily in the state that Hurt World is in. The only thing that I'm kind of surprised is that the devs didn't make a actual final send off. No final, this is the last update, maybe enjoy something else. I would have expected to see something like that, but we never did. Either way, that's going to do it for this Hurt World retrospective. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe for more survival game related content, as I sometimes do. Um, leave a like if you did enjoy the video. I do appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>